What's up? Today we're going to talk about the importance of setting up your suspension and the difficulties that are associated with setting up a Supermoto's suspension. Okay, so that felt pretty good. My forks felt a little stiff, but the rear feels actually pretty perfect. So we're gonna go back home and I'm gonna show you what steps I take to set up my suspension and what I base my numbers on. All right, so we're back home. I've already measured my sag. If you don't know how to measure your sag and calculate that, go watch my video about setting up my friend's R1. So the difficulties that I mentioned as far as setting up a supermoto suspension is that nobody seems to agree on any kind of sag. Obviously the manufacturer, KTM in this example, sets these bikes up for enduro or motocross or whatever, so the suspension is actually pretty soft. However, when you're racing a supermoto or you're just street riding it, you're gonna want the suspension to be a little bit stiffer. Now, the general rule of thumb for sag on any bike is 25% of the total suspension travel. That means on this 500 EXC, the front fork suspension travel is 300 millimeters and the rear is 335. So the sag that we want for a road going machine is about 75 millimeters in the front and 83 in the rear. Now I know that KTM recommends 90 to 110 millimeters of sag in the rear and the factory service manual doesn't actually recommend a sag rating up front. All I have to work with in this case is what they recommend their preload turns to be at. So for the front fork, they say that for a sport setting, you want one turn of preload. What I actually did today was I set it up at one and three quarters of a turn and found the forks to be a little bit stiff. So I backed it off a quarter of a turn and now they feel right where I want them to be. For the rear, KTM recommends that you use 10% of the spring length as your sag. Now I resprung my shock with the progressive spring from Slavens Racing, put it on, used the 10%, and it actually worked out to be just perfect. Now as far as setting up your compression and rebound dampening, you're really going to want to go with something that's close to what the manual calls for, but a little bit firmer because we are riding on different terrain. Obviously a road is totally different than mud or roots or rocks. Now I believe that KTM recommends about 22 clicks on the compression and 16 on the rebound. I'm not exactly sure on that. All I know is that I've got it turned up a couple of clicks, both rebound and compression. And I left the shock at the factory sport settings. So what we're gonna look for as far as compression and rebound on the bike is that whenever you compress both the front and rear at the same time, they compress and rebound at the same rate. You don't want the forks rebounding really fast and you don't want the shock rebounding really fast relative to the forks or the shock. So it needs to be even and smooth. So on my bike, the forks are firmer than the factory setting, but it does compress and rebound at the same rate as the rear suspension. So I feel like 
at the moment, it's pretty dialed in. I haven't actually gotten to ride it on a racetrack because ECR is still being repaved and it is not the beginning of the season yet as far as my race schedule goes. So I will have work to do to it at the track. But as far as everything goes for getting my suspension dialed in, I followed these steps. Firmer on the compression and rebound, made sure that they compressed and rebounded at the same rate, made my sag settings firmer than what the service manual calls for because we're not riding it on dirt that much. I mean, I am riding on dirt, but not all the time. And really dialing in the forks to what feels good for my riding style. One guy might like it softer, one guy might like it firmer. It's just up to your preference and what works best for you on braking and then getting on the gas out of a corner. So as it sits right now, my bike feels pretty good. I can't wait to actually get it on a real racetrack so I can really feel out the suspension more. But that's it. That's all there really is to it. The main thing you want to look at if you're going to do anything is to set your sag correctly. And it's always really important to only change one setting at a time. So once you get your sag dialed in, go ride it, see how it feels, then change your compression and rebound settings on the forks, and then change your compression and rebound settings on the shock. So I hope this helps with any kind of setup problems that you may have experienced on your Supermoto. So as always, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button. And if you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this from me in the future. And as always, do not forget to have a nice day.